Hello, fans, and welcome back to another episode of Shot Clock Scribbles. I am your host, Dendai, and today we've got a jam-packed show lined up for this Thursday, April 11th. It is hot in Sacramento, 83 degrees to be exact, before we start getting some rain again coming up soon. So we're trying to live it up while we can. We're diving deep into everything basketball. First up, we'll be covering the women's final that took place the other week an exciting showcase of the top talent in the women's college basketball game. How historic was the finals exactly? We'll be breaking that down and what the future lies for Caitlin Clark. Then we're heading over to the NBA where the race to the playoffs is heating up. We'll explore the top of the West seedings and the current postseason possibilities. Who's in, who's out, who would have home court advantage and who wouldn't? And what can change in the next coming days? We won't forget about the East, the top six teams there have been battling it out, and we've got the latest updates on their standings. And of course, we have some quick stats on the game's centers, one in San Antonio and the other in Philly. Stick around to hear these interesting numbers. Stick around until the end of the podcast because we've got one exciting gift to give away to one lucky listener. Don't go anywhere. Shot Clock Scribbles starts right now. Hot topics around the league. We're going to be speaking about players of the week from the Western Conference and the Eastern Conference. We'll start off with everything in the West. Guard Kyrie Irving on Monday was announced player of the week, helping his team to a 3 1 record, averaging 32 points, 5 rebounds, and shooting the rock at 52%. On the East, center Christoph Porzingis helped his team to a 4-0 record last week, averaging 20 points per game, 10 rebounds, and 3 blocks. These are the two players that won this accolade of Week 24. Shout out to them. These two guys have honestly had a really good season. Starting off with Porzingis, he's been an instrument of peace for the Boston Celtics. He's playing his best basketball that he ever has played. He's playing against players that are even better than him. Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, Drew Holiday, and having a piece like him is gonna really help the Celtics go over the line. Whether they win a championship this year or not, I don't think they do. That's my humble opinion. But KP has really helped the team out this year. He's happy to be out there playing basketball. He's only missed a a few games this year, 10 to 15 at the very most. He has played in 56 games this season, averaging almost 30 minutes, 20 points a game, 7 rebounds, 2 assists, almost 2 blocks per game. Is efficient from the field, almost 50%, and he notches in around 2 three-pointers per game, shooting the three ball at a 37.5% clip. In the West here, Kyrie Irving, point guard, has just been playing lights out. Him and Luka are Probably the hottest duo right now in the game. There's other duos in New York. You have Julius and Brunson, Brown and Tatum in Boston, Damon in Milwaukee, Murray and Joker out in Denver. But Kyrie right now has been playing very good basketball. He had a 40 piece just recently in this past week, helping his team to a three and one record during that time. And the time is now. He's getting towards the end of his career right now, and he is trying to win another championship. He already has one ring with Cleveland, who had never won anything in 100 years. That's just absolutely fucking crazy. Moving on now to some spicy content. NBA Commissioner Adam Silver says what Jonte Porter is accused of is a cardinal sin, and that punishment for it could go up to banishment from the league per Tim Bontemps out of New York. Wow. That is fascinating. A story that we need to keep a close ear on. This is the danger of bringing betting into sports. I get what Adam Silver was trying to go after here. Definitely trying to make some money and increase that revenue with partners that are looking to give you money. And what the future holds for the NBA, I don't know if we'll have a team in Vegas, but my guess is that there will be an NBA team in Vegas in the next three to five years. This is an intro to this world of betting. If any of you guys out there watch soccer, you know the history about the English Premier League and how players in the past have gotten suspended from the league, sometimes forever. And that is just what happens, especially when you start having teams 
where your betting sponsor on the front of their shirts it's essentially inevitable right you see the impact that it has for these players that are out there they're getting heckled night in and night out about fans wanting them to hit their parlays get me 20 points hey get me three more three pointers make two more free throws i'll, I'll win a thousand bucks this is the danger that you bring with the sports betting adam silver is using him as an example and you know what quick little backstory i know somebody who knows him personally and his brother went to school out in missouri they went to high school out there at father fulton in columbia missouri before his brother michael porter jr moved out west and attended his last few years in seattle before moving back and going to college at the college of missouri this person had really great things to say about both these brothers he was a photographer for that high school and has been taking pictures for 20 plus years there in columbia missouri his brother michael has said he doesn't believe his brother is capable of doing something like this i don't know but it's definitely some tea i want to see what happens and how this story develops i'm sure you guys will too i'll keep you guys updated as more information comes out but i don't even think he's featured in the game since this news broke out it could be the end of his career all right number 34 out in milwaukee is next up on the podium news broke out a couple days ago Giannis is out for the last three remaining games to end out the season quote milwaukee bucks star Giannis avoided serious injury and has been diagnosed with the left calf injury after leaving tuesday's 104 91 win against the boston celtics because of the injury he will miss the final three games of the regular season, according to the team. And close quote. What impact does this have on the Milwaukee Bucks? The injury comes just as the Bucks are gearing up for the playoffs, which begin very soon. The Bucks have three games remaining in the regular season and are number two in the Eastern Conference. However, the New York Knicks trail the Bucks by one game in the standings for that slot. Additionally, the number four seed. Orlando Magic and number five seed Cavs trail the Bucks by two games, and the number six seeded Indiana Pacers are two and a half games back behind Milwaukee. More on that a little bit later. Close quote, open quote. We're going to need him, so if he's got to get rest, if he's got to sit out these next couple of games to be ready for the playoffs, we need him to be as close to 100% as he can be. Close quote, Bucks forward Chris Middleton said. Closed quote. Last couple games of the season, I think that's a good game plan from the Bucks. Have him rest that out. The calf injury is something to not take very lightly, and he, he needs all the rest that he can get. Giannis is a fierce competitor out on the court. A player of his caliber gives 150% night in and night out. He rarely rests, and this explosion that he plays with up and down the court is something to be wary of because this longevity is not going to happen for very long. Injuries like this is inevitable the way that he plays. He should not stop playing the way that he does. Keep on doing what you're doing. It's one of those things that we're going to have to take a close look at early in the playoffs to see how Giannis is moving up and down the court. Is he grimacing? Does he feel uncomfortable out there at, at any points? of the game does he get more rest during the stretch of games if they played the playoffs today they'll be playing the number seven seed that would be the winner of the 76ers and the heat at the bottom of the east moving on to the next topic here drew holiday agrees to a four-year 135 million contract extension via Woj. let's unpack this here quote Holiday agreed to terms on a four-year, $135 million contract extension with the Celtics. His agent, Jason Glashon, confirmed Wednesday. ESPN first reported the new pact, which the team announced Thursday. Holiday is declining his $37.5 million option for next season as part of the deal. The extension will keep him under contract through the 2027-2028 season. Quote, in addition to being one of the more accomplished players in the league, Drew is an elite teammate and competitor. Close quote. Stevens said in a statement. Quote, he combines 
an unselfishness to do whatever is best for the team with an edge to take on any challenge at any time. We are grateful that Drew is a Celtic. Closed quote. A lot to unpack there. This is a good move for Boston. You lock him up now. Your salary is going to your big three now. Tatum is up next this offseason. He will be signing the largest NBA contract in league history like we covered a couple pods ago. But let's take a look at Drew Holiday's numbers this season. Drew has played in 68 games this season, starting in every single one of them. He's averaging 12, 5, and 4, shooting 48% from the field and 43% from three, respectively. His numbers have declined slightly because of the threat that Jalen, Jason, KP all attract on the floor. Not to mention Derek White as well, who is a baller. Solid starting five as you're going to get in the association. He averages around four more points, an extra rebound in the playoffs, but his field goal percentage, three, and free throws all go down as well. Not, so we all know that Drew is not a offensive juggernaut. He doesn't need to be with players like that on his team, but is more of an enforcer on the defensive end. Speaking about defense, Boston have been superb on the defensive end. In 79 games played this season, they're allowing 110 points from their opponents, grabbing 35 defensive rebounds. Defensive rebound percentage is at 72%, which is damn stellar. Anything above 70 in my eyes is good, just for a quick reference. 6.5 steals and around the same for blocks. They limit their opponents to 13 and a half second chance points. 13 rebounds and limit their opponents to close to 13 fast break points. Lastly, allow their opponents to have 48 points in the paint. Those types of numbers are the reason why they are the best on the defensive end, and Drew is a big part of that. So, kudos for the C's on locking him up moving forward. Now, from Boston, we're going to shift all the way to the West Coast in Sacramento, California, where I am based out of. Sacramento King Center bonus double-double streak has ended at 61 games. Sabonis had 8 points and 13 rebounds in Sacramento's 112-105 loss to the Oklahoma City Thunder on Tuesday night. What does this mean? Sabonis owns the 7th longest streak of double-doubles in the NBA history. He had just moved past Elvin Hayes' stretch of 60 straight from October 30th, 1968 to February 22, 1969 on Sunday in a win over the Brooklyn Nets. His streak was the longest since the NBA and ABA merged for that 1976-77 season. He broke Kevin Love's mark of 53 straight since the merger last month. He had 8 points, 13 rebounds, and 5 assists. The Kings had beat the Thunder twice this season, and the Thunder did the same. So they leveled each other out on the season series, which doesn't really mean much at all because they're not remotely close in the standings. Great streak for the number 10 here in Sacramento. Mike Brown alluded to this a lot in his post game conferences of how remarkable this streak is and it was interesting to learn that during the Woj interview he mentioned deleting all of his social media before the season started this works wonders I'm telling you my friends I've done it before block out all the noise and concentrate on what you need to do much respect for doing so number 10 now is a good time to segue into the next portion of the pod we're going to be talking about the college women's basketball game last week the hype game in which the iowa hawkeyes and record-breaking star kaylee clark took on and lost to number one seeded south carolina and drew more than 18.9 million views sunday according to espn and the audience rating company much congrats to Don Staley. I love to see black people get to the mountaintop. Any people of color, really, because all odds are against us. The Philly native notches in her second championship in three years. And as we take a look at Staley, she is the head coach in the Southeastern Conference. The 53-year-old out of Philly, 5'6", high school out of Philadelphia. She played four years in college in Virginia, close by. She was the ninth overall pick first round in 1999 the same year that i moved 
to the USA. She was selected by the Charlotte Sting. She played 10 years in the W as a point guard, number five. But she has coached more than she actually played in her career. She's notched in a lot of accolades during her time. Six-time NCAA Regional Final Four. Eight-time SEC Regular Season Champion. Four-time Naismith Coach of the Year. Four-time WBCA National Coach of the Year. Two-time AP National Coach of the Year. The Sporting News National Coach of the Year this year. Four-time USBWA National Coach of the Year. You get what I'm saying from here on. She has been decorated as a coach and continues to move mountaintops as she keeps moving forward. Love to see it. And... Moving on to the guys here, the men's Connecticut versus Purdue game Monday had 4 million fewer viewers with 14.8 million Nielsen said NBC News. So what does that mean? In a nutshell, the women drew a bigger crowd than the men's did this past week in the national championship game. Caitlin Clark and some of the other girls too are the reason the game is rising and average ticket prices have already gone up more than 200 percent that is just wild so shout out to five of these women on this list here paige beckers out of yukon angel reese lsu cameron brink stanford kellen clark camila cardoso all these women are moving the game and is the reason why the women's game is flourishing as it ever has before top 10 mock draft of the wnba this season and you don't want to miss this list here listen to this number one caitlin clark indiana fever number two cameron brink los angeles sparks three rakia jackson chicago sky number four Camila Cardoso, Los Angeles Sparks again. Number five, Aliyah Edwards, Dallas Wings. Number six, JC Sheldon, Washington Mystics. Number seven, Angel Reese, Minnesota Lynx. Number eight, Isabel Bolase, Chicago Sky. Number nine, Alisa Peely. Number 10, Dyer, Connecticut Sun. That is what the top 10 WNBA mock draft is looking like and the future is bright for the women's game. Things are heating up out west. Who will get the crown as the top dog? Those three teams in question are the Minnesota Timberwolves, Denver Nuggets, and the Oklahoma City Thunder. Let's take a close look at each of these teams last two games of the year and I'll break down my prediction in order one, two, and three. First, with the Minnesota Timberwolves, they play the Hawks and the Suns. The Nuggets play the Spurs and the Grizzlies. The Oklahoma City Thunder play the Bucks and Dallas. My prediction is Denver Nuggets at one, Timberwolves at two, and Oklahoma City Thunder at number three. So next in the pod, the exciting part in this section is the postseason seeds possibilities as of Thursday. April the 11th when I'm recording this it's 6 12 p.m. Pacific time let's go ahead and break this down let's start off with the west and then go to the east as we normally do left to right number one through three is pretty much all open all these teams that we just talked about above can get the number one seed Denver Nuggets Timberwolves and Oklahoma City Thunder four and five are locked in Dallas Mavericks and the LA Clippers will play each other now they're just playing for home court advantage. The Dallas Mavericks are 1-2 against the Clippers this season. Let's go ahead and break down the three quick matchups here. They won the first matchup 144-126. to They were great in that game. Shot the Rock at 52% from the field, 45% from three. The next two games did not go in the Mavericks' favor. They lost 107-88. to shooting the rock at 37% from the field and only 23% from three. The last matchup, Mavericks lost 120 to 111, shot the rock at 42% from the field and only 32% from three. Moving on to six through 10, 
Number six is wide open right now with the Pelicans, Suns, and Kings. From seven to ten, any of these teams can get in these positions. Four teams, Pelicans, Suns, Kings, Lakers, Warriors. Any of those teams can flip-flop. My prediction right now as it stands at 6.21 p.m. on Thursday, the 11th, I predict the Pelicans will stay at number six. Suns will be at seven. Lakers at 8, Kings at 9, and Warriors at number 10. We'll shift now to the East Coast where Boston holds the number one seed in the Eastern Conference. Number two is wide open between these three teams, the Bucks, Knicks, and Cavs. Number three and four, any of these teams can flip-flop in either direction. Bucks, Knicks, Cavs, Magic, Pacers. Moving on now to position number five through seven. These are all exactly the same, minus the Knicks. The Knicks cannot go any lower than position number six. So five and six will stand as is. Knicks, Cavs, Magic, Pacers, 76ers, and the Heat. Number seven, Cavs, Magic, Pacers, Sixers, Heat. Eight, Magic, Pacers, 76ers. Heat and number 9 and 10 could flip-flop between these two teams. They've been going at it towards the end of the season. Bulls and Hawks. Predictions. Who do you guys think are going to be in the top 6 out in the East? Make sure you let me know in the comments section below. Here is my quick prediction. 1 through 6 in the East. 1 Boston. Obviously they have that solidified. Two Bucks, three Cavs, four Knicks, five Magic, six Pacers. It basically stays the same as it is now, but the Cavs and the Knicks essentially flip flop in their spots here. Next, in this pod, I want to quickly highlight two big centers in the NBA game today. The first one is going to be Victor Wembanyama, who is getting a signature shoe by nike got the alien logo got the prototype out there and about today i actually do like the design of it i think it's pretty rad to be honest but i wanted to speak about defensive player of the year candidates victor rudy bam jared allen and anthony davis victor leads all these categories here and that is steals per game blocks deflections and defensive rating on and off differential Victor's numbers is as followed, 1.3 steals per game, 3.5 blocks, 3 deflections per game, and a negative 12.0 rating for a defensive rating on and off differential. As we talked about in the last pod, Rudy is obviously going to get this award, but Victor has had a great defensive year. Who do you guys have to win this award? It's close. But Wemby's numbers are definitely impressive, not even just for a rookie, but in general. My prediction is this one should be going to Rudy, as also his team is doing a lot better than their Spurs. Moving on now to Joel Embiid. I saw a quick highlight today that jumped out at me. And listen to this. JoJo has more points than minutes played this season. Those numbers exactly are as followed. 1,321 points, and then with minutes played, 1,277 minutes. JoJo has 44 more points than his minutes on the floor this season. On the last pod, we spoke about his health, longevity. The best seed that they can get right now is the fifth spot. They could, however, be playing in the playing tournament, which is not ideal for the big man you need him to get as much rest as possible right now. There are two last games remaining, the Magic and the Nets. I think they'll win the last two games, but in being cautious of JoJo's minutes, I would limit him to under 30 minutes, maybe around 20, 25 minutes per game to end out the season just to get his legs under him using those NBA minutes. Next in the pod, we're getting towards the very end. We're going to be discussing about the Los Angeles Lakers. The Lakers have been hitting their stride late in this season. They just came back home after a long trip on the road on the East Coast. But 
injury and health has really bit them in the ass towards the end of the season and it doesn't come at a good time as ad got hit in the face lebron has been down on some illness so ad as we all know was out last game against the warriors they just lost against the warriors the other night and the one before that lebron james was out on sunday against the minnesota timberwolves in which the lakers ended up losing with these lakers they need to be healthy come the postseason you have jackson hayes playing more minutes and more of an active role instead of on the bench he's out with the starting unit and getting more minutes under his belt christian wood continues to be out they have been hampered with injuries all year long he is the second center off the bench for them it's good to have gabe vincent back on the floor he's not a offensive juggernaut but he definitely holds his own on the defensive end very much like drew holiday does with the boston celtics so this playing scenario should be scary for any team out there i would not want to face the los angeles lakers with the one two punch of lebron and ad those guys have some of the best chemistry in the association as they come we saw what the lakers did last year they get to the conference finals they do play the plane against the timberwolves they beat them move on play a couple more rounds and get swept by the denver nuggets in the conference finals which nobody was expecting but it does happen it's the game that we love so much that anything can happen but with lebron and ad you know what these guys are going to bring night in and night out it's the surrounding cast for this team like d austin tp Jax, gabe and the rest of the team to really help anchor your two best players on the team i think they can have another long run so as long as they stay healthy and they get into their groove to begin the playoffs. The last two games of the season, they should win against the Grizzlies. They win the last game against the Pelicans during the weekend to set them up at number eight. Speaking of the Lakers, I recently saw that they are favorites right now to land Bronny James, LeBron James's son, who just entered his name into the portal. They thought is he is actually going to be sticking around for another year. I don't think at USC he felt like he was utilized, in my honest opinion, the right way at USC and is looking for another role, which is totally fine. Players that enter the portal are getting a bad rap right now, but it's a business decision for these college athletes, and I totally applaud them. All these college athletes are doing what they need to do to yield them a higher pick. Do what you got to do. I don't fault you for one quick second. Odds to land Bronny James right now. The Lakers are at the top. Then the Knicks, Heat, Cavs, Clippers, Hawks. The last couple games, the Lakers have dropped the last two games. Let's go over the Lakers' last six games. They beat the Nets, Raptors, Wizards. Those are all games that they should have won. Won at home against the Cavs. And they dropped the last two against the Timberwolves and the Warriors. I predicted that they needed to go 6 out of 7 on a few podcasts ago and my prediction on Instagram. They did just that. They're tallying up some wins. They haven't really moved past out of the ninth spot. They went to the 8th position for just a little bit, but they go back into that position as it stands right now. Before we wrap up today, I have a question for you all out there. My question for you is, who do you guys want to be on the show? I have not had a single guest on this show, but I would take some suggestions. Please be realistic. I want to start ramping this up. The platform slowly transitions to more than just basketball. Just be there with me for the ride. It is all a journey. There is a beauty in the madness, as they say. Also, what other merch would you guys like to see? hats stickers make sure to let your thoughts be known in the comments section below i will be posting more about these shirts in my post so you guys can take a look at the colorways got the ivory colorway the gray colorway in sizes medium large and excel in the near future i'll also have a code for you guys to just go on there and purchase merch i will ship them to whatever address that you put on there exclusively only right now in the u.s because if I do outside of the U.S., it might get a little tricky. Let's just kind of leave it at that. I will also be creating a new TikTok for the Shot Clock Scribbles podcast. So make sure you guys tap in and follow me. If you're listening to this, I probably already have it by now. 
So make sure you guys go on TikTok and find me on there. In closing remarks, that is the buzzer for today's episode of Shot Clock Scribbles. I want to thank all of you for tuning in and joining us. We love bringing you the latest and greatest from the world of basketball and your support means everything. Todo. Make sure to hit the subscribe button, give five star ratings if you can, and follow the page on Instagram where I'm more social than any other platform. TikTok, I am getting that ramped up very slowly here. Don't forget, we've got a special treat for our listeners today. I'm glad you made it to the very tail end of the show. Head over to our Instagram page, Shot Clock Scribbles Podcast. Drop a comment with the word merch under our latest post, and you could win a free Shot Clock Scribbles t-shirt in your choice of colorway and size. We'll be choosing one lucky winner, so make sure to get those comments in ASAP. The lucky winner will be chosen on Tuesday, the first day of the play-in tournament. Thanks again for listening, and we'll catch you on the next time on the next episode, number 13, for more analysis and, of course, more scribbles. Until then, keep your game tight and your conversations lively. I am out of here. Cheers.